okay. The question is, suppose I have an urn with red and blue balls, okay, some of which are big and some are small. And the numbers are given here. I have two big reds, one small red, three big blues, and one small blue. Right. And from this urn, I randomly select a ball. That's my random experiment. Now, part A is simple enough, I believe. What is the probability that I pick a red ball? Here, I have to write my sample space. Since I'm asked about the red ball, in fact, let me put it in this way. Let's say this is my sample space. And I have two big reds. Okay, so let me use red. Okay, I have two big reds. Okay, and one small red and three big blues. Okay, and one small blue. Right. So what is the probability that I pick a red? Of course, when you look at the event red, let's say, what you have is this right and when when you look at the sample space assuming that they are all equal probable i have one two three four five six seven outcomes in total since i have three outcomes in red probability of red is three by seven simple as that and similarly i can write this probability of blue. I have one, two, three, four blues. And I have seven possible outcomes, so that is four by seven. What is the probability of a small? Okay, when you look at this, small consists of one small red and one small blue simple enough, which tells me that the probability of small must be two by seven, easy enough, right? What about big? In fact, you see red and blue are complement events. So this is three by seven, this is four by seven, they add up to one. And here I can use that corollary if you remember, since I know the probability of small is two by seven, probability of big must be five by seven because it's the complement to small. Okay, so that was easy enough. Next part. What is the probability that I pick a red if I tell you it's small? So I, I just uh, put my hand in the bag. I, I gave the word, let's say I, I selected some a ball randomly and what came into my hand is small ball. So what I'm asked is probability of red given it is small. Now let's remember our sample space. So I'm going to use a black one here. This is my sample space and inside I have um, two big reds and Sorry. I should be here. What is the probability that I pick a red if I tell you it is small? Um, okay. Let me save some space here. So what I need to compute is the probability of red given small. Now, the information I have is that the outcome will be a small ball. So that effectively reduces my sample space, okay, to 
this set here, right? This is small. Right. So you see by intuition, I can obviously see probability of red should be one half because I have one red, one blue here. So this should be one half. But you can also apply the definition. This should be equal to the probability of red and small, right? Red and small, normalized by the probability of the condition, small. Okay, but these probabilities you see, they are defined in the original universe, in the original sample space. So when you look at red and small, this is my event, and that is one in seven. So the probability of that is one over seven. I should divide by that small. So here, that is the event. That has probability two over seven. So again, you see you have one over two as expected. Okay. Now let's see the third part. What is the probability that I pick a small if I tell you it's blue? Probability of small given blue, okay? I pick a ball, I don't pull it out, you don't see it, I just look inside the bag, okay? I see it's blue, okay? but you do not see the outcome yet. So you don't know it's whether it's small or big. So now, again, you can approach this in two ways. This is blue, the event blue, okay? You see inside it, I have four possible outcomes and just one of them is small. So this should be one of four, but if you want, you can apply the definition that is probability small and blue, okay? And here corresponds to intersection divided by probability of blue. And when you look at this in the original sample space, small and blue, I have just one. So the probability of this is one over seven. And if you look at blue, I have just one, two, three, four four blue balls, four over seven. So that also gives you one over four. Okay. So next question. Now here I have changed the number of balls. Um, I have two big reds, two small reds. So I have two small ones here and the blues, I have three big and three small. Okay. The questions are the same. Um, to be honest, I'm going to leave part A to you. It's simple enough. Let's look at part B. What is the probability that I pick a red? If I tell you it's small, again, the question is, red given small. Okay. Well, in fact, let's, let's uh, write these out quickly. What is the probability of red? I have four reds and in total I have 10. So that should be four by 10. And that makes blue six by 10. What about small ones? I have five of them. So five over 10 and bigs five over 10 also. Now the problem of red given small is, if you look at the event small, this is your updated sample space. And inside you have two reds. So that is two by five, okay? Now when you look at the problem of picking a red, that is four over 10, which is equal to this. So what does this mean? If I tell you this information before you see the outcome, if I give you the information that 
the outcome will be small. The probability you assign to the event that the outcome is a red ball does not change. Okay? So that means this information, okay, the size of the ball, it does not affect your probability assignment to the outcome of red. Okay? What about the other one? What is the probability that I pick a small if I tell you it's blue? So that is probability of small given blue. Okay? So blue is here. And inside it, I have one, two, three smalls and one, two, three bigs. Therefore, small given blue must be one over two or three over six. Okay? You see, this is also equal to five over 10, which was equal to the probability of small. So this information here, the color of the outcome does not change your probability assignment to the outcome small, okay? So what does this mean? These two pieces of information, they do not change each other, okay? So these outcomes, they are what we call independent events, okay? In this setting, being a red and being small are independent the information about one of them does not change your probability assignment to the other. That's essentially what we call independence.